Good morning, Brandeis Marin. Welcome back from spring break. We hope you had a wonderful set of days off with your families, enjoying each other and this beautiful weather. I enjoyed being with Ruby, but we wanted to welcome everybody back and to let you know how much uh, we enjoyed seeing many of you yesterday in observance of Yom HaShoah. It's a big couple of weeks of holidays. Next week we will all be celebrating Yom Ha'atzma'ut together, so let's look forward to that. Take care and have a great day.
בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננת עם לבניך ודיברת פעם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך. It's me, Mr. E. I'm back and I'm here to tell a little story. So let's get to it. The story is called Enough. Once upon a time, a poor young man and his young wife were celebrate. One moment. Judah, I need the name of a man and a wife. Um, Samuel and Lila. Samuel and Lila. Good names. So Samuel and Lila were celebrating the Passover holiday in the way that they loved to celebrate, having the best meal they could. And they were poor, and when they finally got everything together, they raised their glasses on this beautiful night of Passover, ready to, to sort of wish a l'chaim to one another, and just then they heard a knock at the door. Hmm, could that be? So Samuel and uh, Lila, they rush to the door, and who do they see? A beggar, a poor man, standing outside, with his hand outstretched saying nothing. They told him, you are welcome here. Please come and join us. We don't have much to eat or drink, but we have a wonderful story that we can share with you. So they shared their food and drink of what they had, and they shared the story of Passover. They shared about how their ancestors had been slaved in Egypt and how they had been freed to seek out the promised land. The three of them Stayed up for hours and hours and hours till late in the night, talking and singing and and talk more about Moses and 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 the and the burning bush and wow the stranger got more and more interested in the stories and they counted the ten plagues that happened that struck Egypt when the Pharaoh finally let people go and they sang about their freedom and finally when the candles were burning out and there were no more candles left to light, the 
Traveler was ready to go. Please stay, Samuel and Lila told the Traveler. You can sleep in our bed. We'll make ourselves a bed of hay. It's fine. Thank you so much for all your kindness, the beggar said, but I must continue on my journey. As he headed out the door, he smiled warmly and said, may the next thing you do have no end until you say enough. And he was gone. He'll need money on his journey, thought Lila. She reached into her pocket for the only money that she had, one silver coin. When she took it out, she felt another coin in her pocket. Huh. So she took that one out, and then she felt another one. No matter how many times she pulled the coin out of her pockets, more appeared. Soon, they started piling up on the floor. It couldn't stop. It was spilling everywhere. Coins, 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 coins. Finally, the wife said, we have all the money we will ever, ever, ever need. This is amazing. You're right, said Samuel. It's enough. And that moment, when he said the word enough, there were no more coins in his pocket. The magic was over. They sat down and looked at their great fortune. You know, that was not any ordinary man, said Lila. That must have been Elijah the prophet in disguise. Elijah the prophet Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hanavi? At that moment, they heard another knock at the door. Oh, they rushed to the door. But instead of Elijah, there stood Samuel's hard-hearted brother and his brother's hard-hearted wife. And they had come to collect the rent. They actually owned the building. The rich brother opened the door and looked. Wait a minute. Where'd you get all those coins? Well, they answered. It was a gift from the prophet Elijah, Eliyahu Anavi. And he gave him what we gave him, what little we had, and he gave us all this. Well, where's Elijah now? The brother asked. Well, he's walking down the road. The rich brother and his wife quickly ran to their carriage, put their horses into a mad gallop, and got as close as they could to Elijah. And they called out, Sir, sir, you must be tired. Come rest at our house. Eliyahu refused, but they kept insisting, and finally he agreed. And they took him back to their house. The rich brother drags him over, shows him this great, big, beautiful mansion. Look, this is so much nicer than my poor brother's little shack. And he looked at all the many rooms with marble floors, but he wasn't impressed. Then the brother's wife ordered the servants to serve up the finest foods. This dinner is better than any of those scraps you got at my brother and sister-in-law's house. Elijah hardly ate anything. Then they brought in a band of musicians to play. Our music is better than their singing. Then the rich brother and wife told the stories, but the Passover stories was not what they were telling. They were telling stories about themselves, bragging about how they become so rich and so important, how everybody loved them. Elijah said nothing. Finally, they said, we'll show you to your bed. No, Eliyahu said, I must continue on my journey. Fine, fine. Here's some money. Wink, 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 said the rich brother, and he slyly gave him five gold coins. Now, what are you going to give us in return? What do you want, Eliyahu said. And the rich brother said, We want more than you gave my brother Samuel and his wife Lila. After all, we gave you way more than they did. Eliyahu replied, You gave me less than they did, because you gave nothing out of kindness. Well, we still deserve something, they both said. Yes, you do, he said. I will give you what I gave them. May the next thing you do have no end until you say enough. He walked out the door, and when they looked for him, he was nowhere to be seen. The rich brother rushed back inside and was about to grab his money box so he could pull out one large coin. He said, wait, 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 wait. Let's make sure no one sees what we're doing. You close the front door. I'll close the shutters of the windows. So he ran and he shut the door, and she closed the shutters. Good. Now let's fill the house with gold. But suddenly, the wife found that she was opening and closing the shutters again. And the husband said, well, didn't I just tell you to do that? And she's like, yeah, I can't control. I keep opening and closing the shutter. And then the brother started noticing he was still opening and closing the door, constantly opening and closing it, opening and closing it, opening and closing it. Soon, a racket, this loud noise everywhere, and all the neighbors start coming around and looking inside, and they see this really wealthy and important couple just making nuts of themselves, opening and closing and opening and closing and being exhausted. I can't stop. We need to end this magic enough. So finally, it stops. And they fall back on the floor. And outside, you can hear all the townspeople laughing and cracking up at them. And the spell broke. 
They were so upset and humiliated that they stayed inside for weeks. They never came out of the house. And when they finally did, they never dared to brag again. It was enough. Diana. So happy Passover, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the story, and I hope you enjoy what you have and great, grateful for all that we are, have with one, with one another and to be grateful for this beautiful season and be grateful that we're all going to see each other very soon. Yeah.